members of the Talwa Market Vendors Association, we are officially to begin our program. Thank you very much. Um, <clears throat> The President of Tabo Market Vendors Association, members of the Vendors Association, CEO of Tabo, members of the uh, Tabo Market, families, um, invited guests, media partners, ladies and gentlemen, Assalamu alaikum, Namaste, Nisambula Vinaka, and a very, very good morning to you all. It is always good to be in the West. And uh, it's always good to come around to the sunny side of, of Fiji and see these beautiful, beautiful, warm smiles. Um, I grew up in Ba, so Tavua is like, what should I say, a younger brother or a younger sister to me? Um, anyways, and um, thank you very much for the invitation extended to be present here to be part of your Eid celebrations. Um, thank you very much for the invitation. and. Uh, Thank you very much for being here. To all those people who have taken time out, thank you very much for being here, taking time out from your busy schedules. I know it would be a busy day. You might be losing some business, but hopefully with God's blessing, you will recover your losses. Ladies and gentlemen, I would also like to thank the SDMO Tavua and uh, the hardworking team from Tavua Hospital who are here this morning, not only to conduct some very important um, test, but also to advise you on uh, two very important issues. One is about healthy living. The other one that we just spoke about is the meningococcal um, vaccination program that uh, the ministry has embarked upon. But before I go on to that, can I wish you all a very, very uh, belated uh, Blessed Eid celebrations? And I, I'm sure you are looking forward to tasting the, I could see the palau being served. and. Uh, tasting the, the, the sweets that has been prepared as part of this celebration. We celebrated Eid, um, Muslims celebrated Eid on, some celebrated Eid on Friday, some on Saturday, some on Sunday, some yesterday, and here we are. Uh, the celebrations are continuing, and this is how we do things in Fiji, and I'm sure you're all aware of how celebrations happen in our country. And I think Tavua is blessed to have that celebration uh, this morning. And uh, the Peshi Imam spoke, spoke about bonding and unity, and that's very important. Um, for us, from a health perspective, I think fasting is very important. And uh, because I stand here as, as, as the health minister, I, I believe that during this month, um, it, it gives people a time to reflect reflect about the type of life we want to lead. Of course, it is all about spirituality. It's all about our belief in religion. And it's, it's about sharing. It's about sacrificing. And it's about bonding with those around us. And in Fiji, we are blessed to be living in, in, um, in, in such a multicultural uh, society. And our diversity, we may belong to different cultures. We may belong to different religions. But I think we are all united as, as, as Fijians. And that is one thing I would like to say, that we should never, we should never let any, any thoughts of division between us because of our religion. Our religion, our diversity, our culture should bring us all together. And that's what we see here today, the various cultural groups mixing together to celebrate this very auspicious festival of Eid. Um, uh, ladies and gentlemen, so once again, I commend the, uh, ma the market vendors for organizing, organizing this event, and it, it's indeed commendable. All those who have uh, contributed, all those who have joined in to make this celebration a success, uh, congratulations. And uh, to, to the market vendors, I think you play a very, very important role. And how is that? Again, if I can go back to health, okay? Your role in providing healthy, nutritious, fruits and vegetables to our people is highly commended. What would we do if you're not here? Okay, so thank you very much for what you do uh, in ensuring uh, food and national security so that our people can have access to safe and nutritious food, which is indeed the foundation of good health. Um, <clears throat> uh, ladies and gentlemen, as we partake in this Eid celebration, it is very important that we really look back at our lives and see where we want to move forward. 
what changes do we need to bring in our lives? And one of the changes that I mentioned is the fact that we must treat everybody with respect and equality. It's very important. Whether you are our seniors, whether you are our mothers, whether you are our neighbors, everybody needs to be treated with respect and dignity as we try to move forward. And of course, celebrations like this not only allows us to come together and eat and be happy, it also allows us to learn from each other. It also allows us to strengthen our unity and broaden our knowledge about each other, how, what, how we live, what we eat, why we do certain things. And of course, it helps us to appreciate, it helps us to appreciate each other's cultures and allows us to live peacefully in, 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 in Fiji. And that's what we are trying to, to, um, to promote. So let this eat season help us cultivate the values of respect, gratitude, and compassion in our do daily lives. Um, so, ladies and gentlemen, I would just like to say this, that the key message from me to you is for us to unite and embrace multiculturalism. And all of us need to commit to build a better and a unified nation, stronger Fiji, way, way better than, than before. Let us reach out to our neighbors. Let us, let us reach out to our friends and families with the message of generosity, sacrifice, and sharing. It's very important that we need to embrace that. Um, while talking about compassion, commitment, and dedicated, dedication, ladies and gentlemen, I would also like to take this time to thank my hardworking staff, the medical officers, the nurses, the allied health workers that continue that continue to strive to deliver better services to ensure that your health and your well-being always remains our priority. A lot, of, a lot of diseases that are presented to our health centers and hospitals can be very well managed if we all say, my health is my responsibility. Many at times you say, your health is the doctor's responsibility. Your health you say, your health is the government's responsibility, or your health is the minister's responsibility. Our responsibility, yes, is to provide you with services, is to build infrastructures, to ensure that we, we make things, we, we make aware things for you to know. But at the end of the day, ladies and gentlemen, it is you who must take responsibility. And how do you do that? By listening to advice, by having regular checkups, by checking what you eat, coming back to eating. Eid has been a time there. Eid has been a time where we eat and eat and eat. And what do we eat? We eat sweets and sweets and sweets. That's fine. It's time to celebrate, OK? But that should not be a habit. We have habits that affect our health. Excessive drinking. Tobacco, yangona, alcohol, sweets, sugar, fats, oil, you name it. We so love our food. Eh? In Fiji, we just love our food. Give us our food and we are happy. Okay, fine. But what happens when you overeat, when you overdo anything? It has a side effect. When you have a lot, when you, when you consume lots of sugar, doctors will tell you high risk of getting diabetes. Too much oil, fats, and uh, salt, hypertension, cardiovascular diseases. And then what happens? Diabetes. I'm sure you've heard about diabetes. Every now and then we talk about how our country in the Pacific is ranked the highest in terms of diabetes. Our people are suffering. But it's funny. I was reading one article and said in Fiji, on one side, we have people who are overweight. And on the other side, we have children who are underweight. So in order to have good health, you need to have a balance. Anything that you need to have a balance. So after today's function, after eating lots of palau and semi and sweets, please take a walk to burn off those calories. That's why we say exercise every day is very important. It's very important. It's, it's what you can do, OK? So you have regular checkups, and the doctor said, look, your sugar is, 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 is pretty high. Here, here are your medications. Do not become too dependent on medication. 
Okay? Then you say, okay, your blood pressure is a bit high, you need to control that. Your cholesterol is a bit high, you need to control that. So basically we are headed towards a future where most of us will be dependent on medicines and injections. Well, that's our job to provide that. My role, again, like I said, is to remind you to eat healthy. Of course, you are all market vendors. Please don't sell the bhaji and go and buy some corn mutton and eat that. That's not right. Okay? So we need to take responsibility. I mean, mothers here, you play a very important role on what is cooked. The dads play a very important role probably in bringing those stuff. I'm not trying to discriminate. All parents play a very important role. We have children. We have children who present themselves to the health centers very, at very young age with these kind of signs and symptoms, and that's alarming. Just, I think, a couple of days ago, there was a revelation done. We, we saying people, a lot of people are dying from diabetes. But research has shown that more and more people are dying from heart diseases. So Ministry of Health is trying to promote SOS. You know, in Christianity, you'd say, save our souls. No, this is about saving ourselves from salt, oil, and sugar. SOS. Just remember that. Go easy on sugar. Go easy on salt when you put that little salt in your, in your curry. This is what we do, huh? Spoon, there. Taste some more. Please. I mean, I, that's what I, sugar, what do we do? We put sugar in the tea, boil, boil. We don't like it, put another tablespoon. That's not right. At one time, we used to think that only elderly people got pressure and diabetes. The ages are coming down, and that affects the productivity of people. We have a lot of people losing their limbs. They reach the hospitals, uncontrolled sugar, you lose your legs. What happens? You can't go to work. You lose your income. Unless and until it happens to you, you will not realize. Eh? You say, oh, it's going to happen. We'll manage it. Let it be. Let me eat today. I'll think about it tomorrow. But that attitudes need to change. And all of you sitting here can make a difference in your own homes. Regular exercise. Wake up early, go for a walk. Go for a swim. Get on the treadmill if you want to. But it has to be regular. We women, what do we think? Because we walk from morning to afternoon, we wash the dishes, we clean the clothes, we sweep the house, we think exercise is done. No, that's not exercise. Exercise, you take about half an hour each day, take a brisk walk. How do we eat? We eat breakfast very little, lunch we skip, and dinner? So we, we need to eat dinner like, like a beggar, a little bit. Breakfast has to be nice and healthy. So mothers, wake up early. Fathers, wake up early. Prepare a nice breakfast. Have a good breakfast with your family. Lunch, you wrap it and take it to work. Dinner should be very light. We eat, and then we sleep. So these are simple things that we'd like you to do, and we'd like you to tell your families and your friends about these, these habits. Coming back to uh, meningococcal that uh, S.D. Omo and uh, sister spoke about, yes, it's very dangerous. This year we have, we have lost five people to that. Five people have lost their lives because of that, that deadly uh, meningococcal virus. And as the SDMO said, it is, that virus lives within us. It, it lives within us. It's not something out there. The nose lining and the, the throat, right? Yeah, it, it lives inside us. So when you get sick, when you get sick, you must, like he said, the signs and symptoms, or any sickness for that matter. A lot of diseases can be prevented. Dengue, coming back, last week we declared dengue over. At one time there was a dengue outbreak in the country. Dengue also kills. Related to dengue, you have leptospirosis. That kills people because they're deadly diseases. And the latest one is this main C that we are talking about. We all can protect ourselves from this. Simple things, hand washing, sharing a kava. Those of you who like drinking kava, fine, we can't stop you, but please don't share your billows. It is spread through saliva. If I spit and if I have that virus in me, a little kid may go and touch the floor. And that's what children do. They crawl on the floor, they might touch the floor and then put the hands in their mouth. That's how it spreads. Bottles. A lot of youngsters share water bottles. You drink, then he drinks, then he drinks. No. That's what we are trying to say. It's preventable. It's deadly. It kills. But it can be prevented through 
safe hygiene practices, going to the washroom, washing your hands when you come out, preparing food, washing your fruits and vegetables, boiling water, simple things. As DMO mentioned, um, like I said, sharing of kava bowls, kissing, saliva, spit. some people laugh when we tell them, they smile. But you've got to be careful. You know, if men come home from drinking below, ladies, be careful. Just tell them, go brush your teeth before coming near me. <laughs> well, you don't want to die, do you? You don't. So certain rules you have to make and follow. Men see outbreak is not over. We are still in a danger. Our people are still in a danger of that. But again mention, it's keyword. All our divisional hospitals are subdivisional hospitals. Health centers have the antibiotic that is the first line of treatment. Vaccination, a lot of people talk about why, why am I not vaccinated? I'm not vaccinated. Why are we not vaccinating 20, uh, 19 plus? The reasons that have been explained. It's preventable, it's treatable if detected early. But if you reach the health facilities very late and there are signs of rashes on your body, purplish rashes and stuff like that, that's late. Please listen to radios, listen to TV about the ads we have done to educate people. So next time you're sitting, tell your neighbor. You see the child is sick, take the child to the hospital. Could be anything. Okay, so that's basically that. And like I said, we, we can, as a government, we can continue to invest in building hospitals and health centers. You've seen the new Bar Hospital? That will also service you, eh? It, it should be opening later in the year, the, the new Bar Hospital. The mission will close and then you'll have... So that will also serve Tavua people. That will also serve <coughs> Reki Reki people. There's a lot of word going around about the public-private partnership that the government is going to have in order to run Bar Hospital, the new Bar Hospital. Some people are saying, now people will have to pay for services. No, that's not the truth. You will continue to work in the hospital as you are going to Bar Mission. You will go without paying anything, the services will continue. So if people are telling you that government is going to charge you for services provided at uh, Lotoka and uh, New Bar Hospital after the public-private partnership, that's wrong. Don't believe in that. Services will continue as it is when we shift from mission to the new bar hospital. Okay? That's something I wanted to clarify. And uh, <clears throat> again, uh, Sister spoke about the next phase of vaccination. Why we call it mass vaccination? Because we are targeting close to 333,000 people within the ages of 1 to 19. Right? And she did mention that as parents and guardians, you must give consent. We will not force your child to be vaccinated. If you say no, we will not vaccine your child. So that's why the consent in, is given. So far, we have vaccinated close to 100,000 children in um, Suva Central Area and the Western Ra Division. Vaccines are safe and effective, and they have been proven to be safe and effective in other countries that, where the people were vaccinated. Okay? So the next round of vaccination would be for the Western Area and the Maritime Area. So like uh, Sister said, please be prepared for that. And we'd like to conduct that as early as possible. But just a word, vaccination will not protect you for life. That's that. So if I get that vaccine, I will be protected for about three to five years max. It doesn't mean that if I get the vaccination, after 20 years, I will still not have that. That is something that you want to tell people. Vaccination may be the answer, but at the moment, no, it's more to do with prevention. Cleanliness, that, that, that could be uh, used to do that. And uh, again, like I said, um, dengue cases have come down. So we've declared a dengue outbreak over. But that doesn't mean that we still keep our areas dirty and stuff. You still need to clean the gut rinse. You still need to clean tires. You still need to clean the pot plants that have water where the mosquitoes breed. There are about 25 or 26 types of mosquitoes in Fiji. All those mosquitoes don't cause dengue. There's only two that will cause dengue. But how do you know which one will cause dengue? So it's very important that we always keep our environment clean. We always destroy the breeding places where mosquitoes are going to breed. Overgrown grasses, drains, catarines, tires. So keep your surrounding clean. Okay? And uh, what should I say? I think I said a lot, eh? So anyways, um, again... Um, 
On, on uh, recently, we've heard about, um, I think there was a case yesterday where we lost a child and accident. So please look after your children, especially little children. It's very important that their safety is also paramount. Be aware of where your children are. Children, there are a lot of things happening. We don't want girls and boys to, be, to go through those nasty uh, circumstances. If you have little children near rivers and wells, uh, near the sea or stuff like that, just monitor your children. See where they are. Okay. And um, finally, uh, you, you are aware that we are promoting Keep Fiji Clean. Uh, help the council keep Tawa clean. I'm sure Tawa is a very clean town. And uh, all that happens because we dispose our rubbish properly. You can't just take your hand out of the window and throw a, a plastic wrap or something like that. Avoid use of plastics. Uh, we are promoting people to carry uh, bags, shopping bags, where the number of plastics that we continue to use will be declined. And I think this, this, this month is dedicated to that. Eh? So keep Tawa clean. Be proud of uh, living in Tawa. You may be away from the city, from the capital city, but believe me, life here much be, it's much better. No noise, no traffic congestion. So be proud of, uh, have that civic pride that is very important. If you are farmers, please grow more vegetables. And if you are vendors, well, sell fresh vegetables, okay? And uh, yeah, all in all, so happy Eid once again, and thank you all for being here. Um, thank you for promoting this, um, this, this whole ambience of multiculturalism, and it really, really feels good to be here. So thank you very much, and like I said, if you do eat a lot of semai there with a lot of sugar, please burn those calories off, okay? Walk, walk around the uh, Tabwa town and burn them. You need to sweat out, all right? So have a balance in your life. Eat, eat healthy, exercise regularly, a perfect combination for good health. If you are sick, I'm sure you have a very hard-working team, uh, SDM or you and your team, to serve the people of Tavwa, and we will continue to do, the, we will continue to do the best in terms of uh, bringing you the service delivery. So, thank you very much. God bless and happy eat once again.